going on everybody Chris here from Project Option and in this video we're gonna talk about the collar option strategy now the collar is the combination of a long stock position a short call position and a long put position so let's dive into the basic characteristics of the collar strategy so the collar is a strategy that consists of simultaneously buying a put option and selling a call option against a hundred shares of long stock now ideally, the sale of the call finances the purchase price of the long put entirely, adding downside protection without paying any premium. So if you've watched the video on the protective put, you'll know that one of the downsides to the protective put strategy is that you pay a premium for the put option, which, which can significantly increase your break-even price on the long stock. So by adding the short call and the long put position, the short call can help reduce the cost of buying that put which results in, you know, it can result in you getting downside protection on your long shares without actually paying a premium for that protection. So let's go ahead and go over the collar strategy characteristics. So when you enter any collar position, you can enter it for a credit if the short call is worth more than the long put that you purchase, or you might enter it for a debit if the put is more expensive than the call you sell. So depending on the credit or debit will change the profit or loss calculation. So if you enter a call it for a credit, the max profit potential will be the short call strike price minus the share purchase price plus the credit received times 100. So that credit helps you there. Now if you enter a call it for, call it for a debit, the max profit potential will be the short call strike price less the share purchase price minus the debit paid times 100. So if you pay, if you pay a debit for the collar, your maximum profit potential is reduced by the debit of the collar. Moving on to the maximum loss potential. If you enter a collar for a credit, your maximum loss will be the share purchase price minus the long put strike price minus the credit received times 100. So that credit reduces your maximum loss there. If you enter for a debit, the share purchase price minus the long put strike price plus the debit paid times 100 is your maximum loss. So the debit actually increases your maximum loss potential. Now in, re in regards to the expiration break-even price, if you enter for a credit, your break-even will be the share purchase price minus the credit received. And if you enter for a debit, your break-even will be the share purchase price plus the debit paid. So again, ideally you want to enter for a credit because that will reduce your break-even price. Now the estimated probability of profit is tricky because if you enter the the collar the collar portion so the short call and the long put portion after you've already held a extremely profitable long stock position it's actually possible to have a probability of profit of 100 percent because you can actually have your long put strike above your share purchase price in which case you've just guaranteed that you're going to make a profit at expiration so we'll look at an example of that in a minute here now, the resulting position after expiration depends on if the short call or the long put is in the money. If the short call is in the money, the trader will sell their long shares at the call strike price since the assignment of a short call results in a negative 100 share position and since you own 100 shares, you're effectively just selling your stock at the call strike price. If the long put is in the money, the trader will sell their shares at the put strike price because if you let a long put expire in the money, that position will expire to negative 100 shares of stock and again since you already own 100 shares of stock that long put um, settling to negative 100 shares of stock basically just means you're gonna sell your shares at the puts strike price now in regards to assignment risk the only assignment risk of the strategy is with the short call because there's no assignment risk for a long option so since the only short option in the collar strategy is the short call you have assignment risk if the short call is in the money before expiration. Now if you get assigned in that short call, again, that's going to result in a position of negative 100 shares, and since you already own 100 shares, that basically just means you're going to be selling your shares of stock at the call's strike price. So now that you know the basic characteristics of the collar strategy, let's go ahead and look at an example of a collar and look at the expiration profit and loss graph. So here we can see we have hypothetical option chain and we're going to create a collar from this option chain. So 
In this case, let's assume that the stock price is trading for $150 per share, and we're going to buy 100 shares of stock for $150 per share, and we're also going to put a collar on the stock. So we're going to buy the 145 put for $5 in premium, and we're going to sell the 155 call for $5.66 in premium. Now since the short call is priced higher than the long put that we're buying, we're actually going to collect a credit for this collar. So we're going to collect a 60 cent, 66 cent credit since we're selling a $5.66 cent call and we're buying a $5 put. Now this brings our break even price to our share purchase price of $150 less the credit received of 66 cents which comes out to $149.34. So let's go ahead and take a look at the expiration risk profile graph for this position. Okay, so in this graph we're looking at the long put strike price, the break even price, the initial stock purchase price, and the short call strike price in relation to the profit and loss based on various stock prices at expiration. So as we can see here, since we collected a 66 cent credit, if the stock price remains right at $150, we're actually going to make $66. So you can see that right on the red line there is profitable at expiration. Now, if the stock price falls to $149.34, we're going to break even on the strategy since we collected a $0.66 cent credit. So the stock price can actually decrease by $0.66 cents and we'll still not lose any money. Now, if the stock price falls to $145, we're going to lose a maximum value of $434, and that's because we will lose $5 on our stock, so we purchased the stock at $150, and if it goes to $145, we'll have a $5 loss per share. Now, we did collect a $0.66 cent credit, so if we take that $5 loss per share and subtract a $0.66 cent credit from that, that brings our maximum loss per share to $4.34, and since this is on a position of 100 shares, $4.34 times 100 comes out to $434. Now, if the stock price rises to $155, we'll have a $5 profit on the shares, and we'll also keep that $0.66 cent credit from the collar. So at $155, we'll have a $5 profit on the shares and a $0.66 cent profit on the collar, which comes out to a net profit of $5.66 per share. And again, since this is on a position of 100 shares, $5.66 times 100 is $566. So this just shows that when you buy stock and you sell a call and you buy a put, you are defining your risk on the downside and you're also giving up profit potential on the upside because you're capping your, your profit potential from that short call. So earlier I mentioned that it's possible to construct a collar with no loss potential. Now that's only possible if you are holding a profitable long stock position. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how a collar can be used to guarantee profits at expiration. So we're going to use the same exact option prices as before, except we're going to assume that we bought 100 shares of stock for $130 per share instead of $150 per share. So let's assume that we bought 100, 100 shares of stock for $130 per share a few months ago, and now the stock price is at $150. So we're going to construct a collar by purchasing the 145 put for $5 and selling the 155 call for $5.66. And again, we're going to receive a credit of $0.66 cents for that. Now our quote-unquote break-even price is the stock purchase price of $130 per share, minus the 66 cent credit which comes out to 129.34 however this isn't really the break even price because we're going to make money on this trade no matter what because we just bought the 145 put as part of our collar and since we purchased shares for $130 we are guaranteed to be able to sell those shares for $145 per share so let's go ahead and take a look at what the expiration risk profile graph looks like for this position so as we can see in this graph, there is no loss potential for this strategy. Now that's because we purchased 100 shares of stock for $130 per share, and when the stock rose to $150 per share, we put on a collar, and the long put strike of our collar is 145. So 
let's say the stock price falls from 150 to 145. Now, our profit in that case is going to be $1,566. Now, that's because we can sell 100 shares of stock for $145 per share since we own that 145 put because it's part of our collar and we put that collar on for a 66 cent credit. So if we sell our shares for $145 per share through the put option, we are going to make a $1,500 profit on our shares since we purchased 100 shares at $130 and we sold them at $145. Now the additional $66 comes from the $0.66 cent credit we received for the collar. So on the downside you can see that there is no risk and we actually guarantee profits at expiration. Now if the stock price rises to $155, we're going to have a $25 per share profit and we're also going to keep the $0.66 cent credit from the collar. So based on 100 shares, if the stock price goes to $155, we're going to profit by $2,566. So this example just shows that if you are holding a profitable long stock position, you can implement a collar to guarantee profits at expiration if your long put strike price is above your share purchase price. So this is a common strategy that long stock investors might use if they are, you know, they have a, a profitable long stock position, but they're willing to sell their shares at a higher price but don't want to give up their gains so they limit the loss on the downside which is something you might do if you're holding a profitable long stock position through an earnings announcement so if you're a little bit uncertain about the earnings announcement but you don't want to sell your shares you can implement a collar position to lock in profits in case the stock tanks after earnings so now that you know the characteristics of the collar strategy and you know what the expiration risk graph looks like, let's go ahead and look at some actual collar examples to show you how the strategy performs over time as the stock price is changing. So the first example we're going to look at is a maximum profit collar. So here's the setup. The initial stock purchase price is $552.94 and we're going to look at constructing a collar by purchasing the $495 put and selling the 595 call with both options expiring in 52 days. So we're going to collect a net credit for this strategy because we're going to collect $10.67 from the call and we're going to pay $8.42 for the put. So our net credit in this case is $2.25. So that brings our breakeven price to our share purchase price of $552.94 less the 225 credit we received which comes out to $550.69. Now our maximum profit potential on this trade is the short call strike price of $595 minus the share purchase price of $552.94 plus the $225 collar credit times 100 which comes out to $4,431. Our maximum loss potential is the share purchase price of $552.94 less the put strike price of $4.95 and we're going to subtract the $2.25 collar credit from that and multiply it by $100 which comes out to $5,569. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this position performs through time. So in the top portion of this graph we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call strike price, the long put strike price, and the collars break even. So on the bottom part of the graph, we're actually looking at the profit and loss of the collar components. So the profit and loss of the long stock, the long put, the short call, and the collar, which is the combination of those three things. Now, as we can see here, the stock price rises steadily over time and is above the short call strike price at expiration. Now, as we can see here, the best performing uh, asset in this comp in the collar component is the long stock. So at the end of the day, the long stock had a profit around $8,000, but we know that the collar position has a limited profit potential since we sold the call, and we can see that the collar in this case realized its maximum profit potential of $4,431. So in this particular case, you would have been better off just holding the stock, but if the stock price had gone down, you would have been better off with the collar. So this just shows that when you have a collar on, your real risk is that the stock price explodes and you miss out on the gains because you are short a call. So let's go ahead and look at another example. 
So in this next example, we're going to take a look at a maximum loss collar position, which happens when the stock price falls significantly. So here's the setup. The initial stock purchase price is 223.41, and we're going to construct our collar by purchasing the 195 put and selling the 245 call. And both options are expiring in 46 days. Now we're going to collect a credit again for this because we're going to collect $6.70 for the call and we're going to pay $5.43 for the put. So our net credit is $1.27. Now that brings our break even price to the share purchase price of $223.41 less the $1.27 collar credit, which comes out to $222.14. Now the maximum profit potential in this case is the short call strike price of 245 minus the share purchase price of 223.41. We add the collar credit of 127 to that, multiply it by 100, and we get our maximum profit of $2,286. Now our maximum loss potential is the share purchase price of 223.41 less the long put strike of 195 less the $1.27 collar credit multiplied by 100 which comes out to $2,714. So now that we know what this trade looks like, let's go ahead and visualize it over time as the stock price is changing. So again, in the top portion of this graph, we're looking at the changes in the stock price relative to the short call strike price, the long put strike price, and the break even of the entire position. And at the bottom, we're looking at the profit and loss of the collar components. So in this example, we can see that the stock price is declining steadily and actually declines a significant amount over the period. So it started around $222 and fell all the way to $145. So this is a significant decline in the stock price. Now, if we look at the profit and loss of the collar components, we can see that the worst performing asset was the long stock. So at the worst point, the long stock was down around $8,000. Now, since we had on the collar position, which includes the short call and the long put, we can actually see that as the stock price is decreasing, we have profits on the short call, and we also have profits on the long put because both of those strategies are negative delta strategies, which means they profit when the stock price decreases. So the profits from the long put and the profits from the short call offset the losses on the long stock position. So that green line there represents the profit and loss of the collar position, which combines all three of the other lines. So the long stock, the long put, and the short call. So as we can see here, the stock price is significantly below the long put strike at expiration, which means the maximum loss potential is realized. Now in this case, the maximum loss is $2,714 which is a much better scenario than the $8,000 loss that the long stock position had by itself at the worst point. So this just shows you how implementing a collar, a collar against long stock can significantly reduce your downside risk. So in this final example, we're going to look at a defensive collar trade. Now, this is going to be an example where we already have a profitable stock position and we enter a collar because we're fearful that the stock price might decrease in the future, but we don't want to just sell the stock because we want to allow ourselves a little bit more upside if it continues to rise. So here's the setup. The initial stock purchase price is $151.04, and since the stock purchase, since we purchased the stock, the shares have risen considerably. So we're going to actually put a collar on now, and we're going to buy the 245 put and sell the 280 call with both, op both options expiring in 44 days. Now we're going to collect a credit for this and we're going to collect a 25 cent credit because we're going to receive $12.30 for the call and we're going to pay $12.05 for the put. Now that brings our quote unquote break even price to 151.04 minus the 25 cent collar credit which is 150.79. Now, the maximum profit potential of this position is the short call strike price of 280 less the share purchase price of 151.04 plus the 25 cent collar credit times 100, and that comes out to $12,921. Now, in this example, we actually do not have any loss potential, so we've actually altered this max loss uh, calculation to come out as a positive number because profits are 
guaranteed in this scenario. So the worst scenario for this trade is the long put strike price of 245 minus the share purchase price of 150.104 plus the collar credit of 25 cents times 100 which comes out to $9,421 of profit. So the best case scenario is we make $13,000 and the worst case scenario is we make $9,000. Now this is only possible when you enter a collar on a profitable stock position. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this position looks like through time as the stock price is changing. All right, so in the top portion of the graph, we're looking at the stock price since we purchased it, and we're looking at the long put strike price, the short call strike price, uh, when we enter the collar, which is going to be significantly after we bought the stock. So the bottom part of the graph we're looking at the profit and loss of the collar components so the long stock the long put the short call and the collar all together now it's important to note that we bought the stock approximately 50 days before we put the collar on so as we can see we bought the stock around 150 dollars and the stock rose to a price greater than 250 dollars now at that point we wanted to establish a collar to reduce our downside risk and lock in some profits, but still allow for some upside if the stock continued to rise. So with 44 days until expiration, we initiated the 245-280 collar, and we collected a credit for that. So as we can see here, after we initiated the collar, the stock price actually did begin to decrease and fell all the way down to $200. So since we initiated that collar, we actually reduced our loss potential on the downside and we actually locked in a certain amount of profits. So as we know, the worst case scenario for this position is a profit of $9,421. And that's because we bought the stock around $150 and when we initiated the collar, our long put strike price was $245. So we ensured that we were able to sell the stock for a price no less than $245 per share. So as we can see here, after the collar was initiated, the profit of just the long stock alone fell from around $12,000 down to around $6,000. So the profits were cut in half, while the collar itself only declined slightly. So by implementing a collar on a profitable stock position, we can lock in a certain amount of profits and still allow for some upside if the stock continues to rise. All right, well, that sums up pretty much everything you need to know about the collar strategy. So let's go ahead and recap the main concepts from this video. A collar is constructed by selling a call and purchasing a put against 100 shares of stock. Now, when structured properly, a collar can be entered for a credit, which is ideal because that reduces your break even on the trade and, you know, it, it gives you some additional profit potential as well. So a collar reduces the loss potential of a long stock investment but the protection comes at the cost of limiting the profit potential on the shares. So compared to a protective put, which is just buying a put against 100 shares of stock, by selling a call to finance that put, you have a lower cost of that protection, but at the same time you are reducing or limiting your profit potential on the long shares because when you sell a call, you're agreeing to sell your shares at the call's strike price. Now, when entering a collar on a profitable stock position, it's possible to structure the collar in a way that ensures profits at expiration. Now, to close a collar before expiration, a trader can buy back the short call and sell the put and the shares at the same time. So you don't have to hold the trade until expiration if you do not want to. Thank you for watching this video, everybody. Please go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel if you enjoyed this video so that you can receive all of our new YouTube videos as we release them.